otherwise we are welcoming to the stage our next panel on making your employees advocates for the company. Um, I will introduce our moderator and she can introduce her guest, but we have Amy Heiss from Dell. She is the leader, now. right now she is the leader of our social media training and activation programs. Um, here at Dell, uh, uh, social media communities, or SMAC as we like to call it. Um, but otherwise, I'll leave it to you, Amy, and uh, welcome, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I have Cheryl Burgess here. She's the author of The Social Employee, and you'll all get a copy of that book. And after the session, Cheryl will sign it for you, if you'd like. Uh, Cheryl and I are gonna have a, a conversation now on employee activation in social. So thank you for joining. Cheryl, let's have a seat. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And first, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to have Dell as a chapter in my book. And chapter seven, if you're looking in the book. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> well, let's start with your book. And what did you learn about activating employees when you were writing? Oh, that's a very serious fundamental question. And a question I have asked several times. And I found that most companies miss the real interpretation of activation of employees. So having said that, there's activation and there's engagement, okay? So activation in the sense of alignment. Um, when you align an employee to a certain skill set, they know how to use the tools, they know how to use Twitter or Facebook and have the channels to promote those. But unless you engage them with the why, the why, which is Cisco's chapter, infusing the why you're not going to have an active, engaged community. And, and so let's talk about that active community. And in your book, in chapter 12, you talk about the social executive. Yes. Yeah, so if you're thumbing through, I see him thumbing through. So the social executive, and at, one of the points that you make in your book is that um, driving trust builds value and having social executives builds trust. Yes. And, and so, you know, we're fortunate at Dell to have a very active CEO in social with Michael. He does all of his own tweets. He's very socially involved and aware. Karen, our CMO, very similar in that. Yes. We have a number of executives who get it, and, and that makes things good for us. What about that layer beneath, that vice president layer where they're not even in social from a personal level? How do you activate them? Okay, so first of all, Michael Dell, I just interviewed Michael Dell just a few moments before and told him how impressed I was with his leadership as an executive, social executive. And Michael, going back, as we know, has been probably one of the most prominent social executives in existence and continues to be so. So how do you activate them? Well, you activate them by teaching them how to teach their employees the why going back and becoming the catalyst to teach the employees the mission, the vision, and the value of the brand. And once you bring that in and focus on that, you will have employees who will be willing to go out there and activate. But how do you get these executives on, on board? So they're busy. Yes. They don't have time. They don't even understand Twitter. Their eyes you know, glaze over, right? Okay, she's laughing. It's very true. I feel like so, you've heard that somewhere. So, <laughs> but it's very true. It's very true. So I had the same question writing the book. And I really didn't have the answer. And here I wonder a whole chapter. So how do I do that? So I went to Sandy Carter, who is an evangelist with IBM. And I said, Sandy, and now I'm having trouble with this chapter. We have ex executives out there. And she said, Cheryl, I'm going to give you the easiest answer. Keep them in their comfort zone, OK? So in other words, if they like to talk and do presentations, then put them on YouTube. If they like to blog, have them blog. If they like to tweet like Michael does, have them tweet. And Michael does, of course, everything. <laughs> so having said that, so. Now you take that concept and say, OK, now you're going to get them out there. But how many are really out there? And this was astonishing. IBM did a study, 2012. 16% of the executives were social. And I'm thinking, whoa. So I go back to Sandy Carter. I said, Sandy, you've got the study out there. 16% of the executives are social. Going forward, three to five years, 
57% will become social. Explain those numbers to me. Help me understand it. Why? And Sandy said, because going forward, boardrooms are going to mandate that executives become social. And so I thought, wow, that's interesting. They're going to have to have a digital footprint to be a CEO. A digital footprint. I mean, that's mandated in three to five years. And that's just around the corner. Wow, that's, those are amazing numbers. And I can see how, uh, you know, that would encourage executives to really yes. have that incentive to, to kind of dip their toe in the water. What yes. would you say would be the first step for an executive who's not using social currently to get started? Well, you know, first of all, you know, and Amy, you just were part of a great report that came out December 5, Altimeter Group. And, um, and I think the first understanding is having a basic understanding intro of social. Okay, we're not the first thing, and I will tell you this, in that report and also in other reports I read, don't ask your executives to be an expert. Don't be an expert. Go strive for the CEO expert of Twitter. Don't be the expert of blogging. Just be yourself. Make mistakes. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. CEOs are going to make mistakes. So not be afraid. So the first step is not be afraid. Take your first step. Every CEO if you've never been on Twitter before, we'll start with maybe a low number. And that's, a, that's difficult for CEOs to accept. They're used to a big presence. I mean, that's hard reality. But it happens. So, um, so I spoke at Wharton um, about this and talked about this to a whole room full of executives. And we had this understanding, you have to get them over that fear factor, not to be afraid to have, okay, 50 followers. I guarantee you, if a CEO infuses social culture into their system, they will have, their numbers will rise. Because a, 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 a company for branding cannot communicate externally unless they first communicate internally. Very true, and one thing at Dow we teach our executives is to listen and then join and then lead. Yes. So you don't have to feel like no. the first tweet no. is leading the charge. No. No. And we even introduce uh, tweet chats. Yes, uh, to you do executives. a great job. I love what Dow does. I have been a fan of Dow <laughs> for so long, and it was funny. I had when I uh, McGraw Hill asked me to write this book. Um, I thought, okay, I knew there's a lot of buzz out there for other brands. But Dow had to be in my book because you guys do it best. And I see the, what Michael Dell said at his keynote today. It's kind of taking being the largest startup. Yeah, world's largest that. startup. Yes, yeah. the world's <laughs> largest startup. And what do startups do best? They're agile. They're agile. And what's the most important fundamental thing about social business? You must be agile. And a lot of big brands, what they're doing right now, they're taking like maybe segments of their executives and making them really agile thinkers like startups and creating that buzz. And so, and I will say, I have to have a little proud point here. Um, Tom Peters has said our book is the best social business book, number one. That's huge. Not only has he said that, but Tom Peters has taken segments of my book and used it in his presentations. So we're really, really proud of that. Absolutely. That's amazing. Congratulations on that. Uh, one challenge we hear from our employees is, how do I get people to share my That's content? Great. That's a great question. And I love that question. Okay. And we talk, that question's really important because it's the other thing. You have employees. Okay. You're under the gun. Even senior executives are under the gun. Okay. Help me out, guys. I need my friends to help me promote this. All right. Promote what I do, I just wrote a great blog, can you help me with shares? Because that's important. Tweets are you're actually going forward, people are gonna be judged by their raises, whether they have followers. I mean, that's a re reality. That's a reality currently at Dell. In fact, we have a group, the North American Marketing Group. There is no best rating in their performance review right. without social media activation. Absolutely. And so, you know, so I like, there's a platform that I use, and, and it's a startup group that I'm really proud of. Um, it's called Triber. Have you ever heard of Triber? No, I haven't heard of it. Okay. So Triber um, started with Chris, Dan Christo and Dino Dugan. And um, they started a few years ago. I've been a big fan of Triber. And we build up communities within Triber. 
and you, we help push each other's social business out, so your blogs or your tweets or whatever that you do, and it's programmed, and it's really a loyal group of people who highly respect your work. I mean, you have to be respected within the community, and within that community, it builds out. And there's other communities like Dynamic Signal, and Dow has, you're, you're coming up with some new initiatives too, which I heard this morning a lot of different ways of promoting. You just mentioned before about your publishing too. That was really exciting too. Right, our, our social net advocacy. Um, yes, absolutely, the, the Pulse tool, we love that. Um, I, I'm getting the signal, so I, want, I have two more yeah. questions I want to get in here. Uh, and, and the first one is, um, you know, we encourage our employees to have authentic relationships yes. and social. And often that means sharing personal aspects That's as, as well question. as professional. Yeah. So we've seen some brands make mistakes in that. What do you see top brands doing to encourage their employees to have authentic relationships that include a bit of personal without crossing the line? And, and you know, you, you mentioned that too about gray areas in your quote. So on Altimeter's report. Um, but I want to say one thing about, before we begin that, is the real conversation about personalization is it's a win-win for the employee. Today, you're no longer employed by your company, you're employed by yourself. It's, you are your own personal brand. That's very important. If you know you're representing yourself as a thought leader, as as a person who networks with people, you're gonna to wanna to make your brand look good because you're gonna to wanna to make yourself look good and you're gonna make yourself look good, you're gonna make your brand look good. It's a win-win. So you find that kind of um, guardrails, your internal guardrails, and, and Adobe in my book has a great reference about guardrails, where you trust people. If you can't trust your employees, who can you trust? Very good, very good point. And then uh, one other thing about your book is you mentioned a story, one of my favorite stories about a flight uh, attendant on Southwest Airlines who had earlier in the day had Taylor Swift's father on the flight and he gave her some uh, guitar picks. Yes. And then on a later flight, a family was going to the Taylor Swift concert and the flight attendant, I think her name was Holly, right. she gave them guitar picks from Taylor Swift. Yes. And they were yes. so excited, they used <laughs> yes. the airline's Wi-Fi yes. to tweet yes. out yes. that she was the best, and I think it was sort of grammatically incorrect, but sort of the best flight attendant ever. And if anyone yes. from Southwest was listening, they wanted them to know that. So when the plane landed, the um, leadership from Southwest met the flight with a cookie cake yes. that had the quote from the customer, grammatically incorrect and everything, along with a sash for the flight attendant to yes. wear for the rest of the day That's right. about how she's the best. I love that story because it, it really promotes, you know, that brands are listening, not just right. um, from their customers and, and what that means, but it's important for employees to know your brands are listening about the experience you're providing right. as well. Do you see that changing? Yeah, and, uh, what I, well, I do. What I like about that story, if I could just, I know we don't have much time, but I love about that story is the simplicity, right? And IBM, you know, we talked about this again. I don't mean to keep going back to IBM, but, you know, I had the same question about gamification, reward system, digital rewards. And they said sometimes it's a simple balloon, yeah. right? Yeah, it's for sure. simple, a cookie. What the, that's all it takes, recognition. It doesn't mean you're gonna get you know, a pay raise or bonus, just within your organization. If you start doing that, infusing that appreciation, a cookie, think about how simple that is and so rewarding. I agree completely. We do some certification. Uh, we have some special events right, right. for certified employees and we find that, you know, that really goes a long way. We have over 10,000 certified employees at Dell now and it yes, really, do. they take pride in that they signature do. on their email oh, and yeah. the certificate that they get. We even get emails. If they haven't gotten their certificate within a week of that certification, they email us and say, where's my certificate? So anyways, we're, we've run out, we of out of time. But thank you to Cheryl again for thank coming you. and talking with oh, us today. Oh. And for anyone who has a book in the audience, if you'd like Cheryl to sign that, she's going to stick around and sign those books for a few minutes. So thanks, everyone. Thank